Good morning, students. Uh, today is our first video lecture of what's left of the school year. Uh, keep in mind, I'll do these one a day and include various assignments throughout the week. Uh, so make sure you do check the video out and that you are taking notes during the video. So we're going to go ahead and start with uh, our last of three chapters, and that being chapter 24. But before I mention the what we'll be covering this week as far as chapter 4, just to remind you that there were just three more chapters remaining in this uh, course, and they are chapter 24, Interactions with Life, which we're going to be going through, uh, chapter 25, which talks about the non-living environment, and then chapter 27, talking about conserving resources. Uh, we're going to try to get through these three chapters, these last remaining weeks that we have, but if we do miss anything, I'll at least post the slide so you can at least review the content and have access to that. And if you have questions about those other chapters as uh, we progress, and if we don't get to them, just please reach out to me and let me know. I just want to mention one thing really quickly with chapter 24, the interactions with life. When you think of all the life forms on earth, we should stand in awe of the beauty, complexity, order, and fragility, and endurance of it all. Uh, this uh, statement I have is posted on slide two, um, and it's got a wonderful assortment of different living things, both plant life as well as animal life. So now we're going to move into chapter 24. So chapter 24, um, what are the sections going to be containing? That's something I'm sure some people are thinking, but if you look on slide four, it talks about what are those three sections are, and then we'll talk a little bit about each of those sections as we get into them. But section one, we'll talk about the living earth itself. Section two, we'll get into populations. And then section three, we'll talk about the interactions within communities. All right, so let's move into section one, the living earth. Well, one thing we need to understand is the ecosystems of the earth. Now, let's just quickly uh, remember the definition we have for a biosphere. The biosphere is the total part of Earth where life can exist and includes a great variety of conditions. Now, an ecosystem is a smaller area consisting of both the organisms and non-living features that interact in the system. Uh, in 1935, the term uh, ecosystem was actually coined by a plant ecologist named Sir Arthur George Tansley. Just a fun little interesting fact there to notice. If you look on uh, slide six, you'll notice that it shows uh, what is contained or the aspects, the various aspects of the biosphere itself. And that is the atmosphere, the ecosphere, the hydrosphere, and the lithosphere. So the atmosphere you should be familiar with is made up of solids, liquids, and gases, and it surrounds the earth providing protection and helping us really to function. It really provides a unique environment for our Earth. Let's move on to the ecosphere. This would be the living portion. If you notice, it looks almost like uh, the tops of trees, and this is the green foliage of our planet, and it's the land on which we live. Uh, connected with the ecosphere is the lithosphere, and that's the ground underneath the, where the soil is, the minerals and such. And then, of course, you see on the left the hydrosphere, and that's, of course, dealing with the water, the sphere of water within our environment. So here's some kind of goals that we're hoping to accomplish as we go through uh, section one, two, and three, is that all living things and non-living things on Earth are organized into levels, such as communities and ecosystems. So seeing the organization of things, both living and non-living on the planet. And there is a sense of order to all living and non-living things. Now moving on to slide eight, we have a quote from uh, former President Theodore Roosevelt, which says, Order without liberty and liberty without order are equally destructive. Order is structure, liberty is freedom. And notice that you can't have structure without providing some degrees of freedom, and vice versa. You can't simply just have this plain freedom and no structure. Um, plainly, folks, like our president, former president states, and states quite clearly, is that they're equally destructive, meaning that we need those both order and liberty in proper and, and right balance. Now let's move on to slide nine, the levels of organization. Life is organized. Sometimes you have to zoom in to see that organization. Other times you have to zoom out. But life is organized. We live on a planet, an orderly biosphere. Now let's go from, uh, so to speak, top to bottom. The biosphere is contained in the biome, the ecosystem, the community, the populations, and the organism itself. Now if you look at the image that's beside on this slide, you'll notice there you see the individual, you see a moose, then a moose within its population, not, excuse me, not a moose, but a, an elk, and then the horse, the elk, along with the moose, and other things in a community, and then the greater, larger one of the ecosystem, including the non-living and other things like plants and such, and then the biome, taking that one ecosystem and placing it in the context of the whole earth. Uh, slide number 10, we're on. There are three things which that make up a biosphere. One, the top portion of Earth, which is called the crust. 
you might remember this from your science or science study. If you look on the, I think it's top left hand corner, excuse me, not top left hand, but top right hand corner, you notice there's a visualization of the earth with like a cutout which shows the, the portions that make up the earth, that being the crust, the mantle, the outer core, and the inner core. Well, if you notice, the crust is very thin. It's a small area, but it's a very important area because it's where life exists. Uh, number two, all the water that covers the earth's surface. And three, the atmosphere which surrounds the earth. So let's move on. Let's look at some examples of some um, difference uh, of systems within it with some ecosystems within the biosphere itself. Okay, an example here is the desert. This one should be most familiar to us because we live in a desert. Notice the saguaro cactus and then even look at the coyote there. Well, in deserts, one thing to consider is little rain. We do get rain, but not a lot. We have plants like cactus, and we also have animals like coyotes and lizards. And just remember, I do have always some fun pictures, such as, such as uh, slide 12, and then slide 13 gives a perspective on, you know, what the desert's like. There's not a lot of green. There is some green, but not a lot in comparison. Now, this next ecosystem is certainly quite the different from the desert. This is the rainforest, where we had little rain. They have plenty of rain, where we have kind of a balance of really hot and some cool temperatures. They have a general warm temperature. Thousands of plants exist, which also means since there's a lot of plants, there's a lot of animal life like parrots, monkeys, beetles, bugs, etc. Here's some nice visual picture, a visual picture on slide 15, which uh, gives us a, a good snapshot of what a rainforest, or at least what comes to mind generally speaking. Then the next one we have is the Arctic. The Arctic is of course near the North Pole includes ice and snow, includes creatures like polar bears and walruses. Uh, yeah, you notice I included a little uh, a funny picture up in the right-hand corner. There's also uh, the orca whale, um, and here's just another picture of a blue whale, I believe it is, underneath the ocean there. It's just a beautiful picture representing the Arctic. Um, the next and the last that we're going to cover just for today is the biosphere of the coral reef. The coral reef, once again, is just another example. Keep in mind that we talked about the desert briefly, the rainforest, the Arctic, and now the coral reef. These are just giving samplings. There's are much more ecosystems, but this kind of gives you an idea of the diversity that is afforded based on how our, our Earth is, where it's located, how it is. And that is the coral reef is warm, shallow ocean waters, coral and aquatic life. And of course, as we're all familiar with the clownfish and the blue tang, because of the Finding Nemo and Finding Dory. All right, and one last slide we're gonna cover, just a visual slide of that sea turtle. Aren't you glad that even if he has kind of a, that look on his face, that that's just a picture, but look at the beauty of that area. Now, if you have any questions about what we've briefly talked about or things you'd like to know more about or like me to cover in another lecture, please let me know in the comments below. Have a nice day, and I look forward to you guys later. Goodbye.